What drugs do you think mess up the kidneys? What are the drugs that you heard me mention that mess up your kidneys that will expose you to gout? Mm-hmm. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Blood thinners, steroids, NSAIDs, paracetamol. Paracetamol is actually number one of the drugs that mess up the, the liver. But people take it every day, right? You know, I have a migraine. You're taking it. You know, I have a migraine. You know, I have this uh, 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 hey, paracetamol all through. Junior aspirin is there. Diuretics, yes. Steroids, yes. Aspirin is actually aspirin is part of the NSAIDs. Yes. Hey, man. A seven senior panadol paracetamol destroys your liver therefore it exposes you to all these conditions and what foods do you think are actually going to cause you gout which of the following foods <laughs> or the following foods will cause you gout will expose you to gout except <laughs> so which foods do you know wheat is there sugar is there well done oh, i love this somebody's saying beef Yes, if you're eating that beef with the sugar, of course, and if you're taking too much lean meat, beer, of course, is there. And NSAIDs, when I say NSAIDs, I mean diclofenac, ibuprofen, meloxicam, selecoxib, acyclofenac, rofecoxib, those drugs that you use to manage pain. Ah, somebody's mentioning milk in diets. This is good aid. Milk is for babies and for calves. Let it be that way. You don't have enzymes that break down lactose. The lactase enzyme is diminished in adults. Milk will actually initiate problems with your gut. It will cause you this celiac disease, just the same way it destroys it. And now you expose yourself to problems. So therefore, if you're actually having gastritis, just change the diet. Change the diet. Don't go and take an antacid, which will mess up your gut. And actually on drugs, add antacids on that list. Add PPIs, the, the omeprazoles, the omeprazoles, all those PPIs and the, the kits. Steroids like dexamethasone, like hydrocortisone, like beclometasone, all of them are there. Wheat products, yes. Antibi Why did we forget antibiotics that actually mess the gut microorganisms and the gut microbiota? Flourishing 516, thank you so much for that. And here I am, having very painful boils under my armpits and thinking of what to take. Now listen, boils are skin infections and skin infections are basically you having a lot of bacteria on your skin but you have a cut that is exposing them to, the, the, uh, to your system and also your immune system is very low. So drop the sugars, the wheat products and the seed oils. Antibiotics are necessary for that boil, yes, but make sure you drain it because you see, pus is actually purines by the way. Did you know that? Pus is purines. And purines are foods for microorganisms. They actually feed the DNA of bacteria. So if you don't drain it and you're taking an antibiotic, you're wasting time. You're wasting that antibiotic. There is a life of you saying that if it's a must, we take NSAIDs, then we should prefer paracetamol. Now, you got it wrong, Prince of Zamunda. I said if it's a must, you take a painkiller. Remember, NSAIDs, paracetamol is not an NSAID. It is not. Now again, understand that statement, the way you just put it, bro. If it is a must. <laughs> yeah? The answer is in your statement. If it's a must. So of course, you cannot avoid painkillers all your life. But we are saying if you're using them, use them for a short period of time. But remember, if you're using them for chronic pain, like arthritis, people use it for all the, the months. You're using it for like two months or so. And even now, people are still sw swallowing this drug. Somebody who is obese, having all these joint pains, is taking this drug every evening. That's what I'm talking about. I'm saying this will mess up your kidneys because they reduce blood flow towards the kidneys and they start causing you kidney problems. Now you'll have a problem with excreting the uric acid. Now gout will be there for a lifetime. So yes, paracetamol can be used, but two to a maximum of three days. That is it. And paracetamol is not an NSAID. NSAIDs means non-steroidal anti-inflammatory. Anti-inflammatory. Paracetamol is not an anti-inflammatory. It is an analgesic. It's just a painkiller. It has no an, it has no anti-inflammatory activity. So we cannot classify it and classify it under NSAIDs. Okay? Zamunda. Halima Hussein, my mom has arthritis and she doesn't use sugar. Now, she doesn't use sugar. <laughs> but she is sweet. Halima, does your mother eat anjera? Does she eat processed foods? Have you gotten her out of seed oils? Have you gotten her out of medication? Halima Hussein, 
Tell us the truth. You cannot tell us I dropped sugar. Now I'm expecting to heal from arthritis. When you're still eating wheat, when you're still taking milk, when you're still using seed oils, you're eating spaghetti. You dropped sugar, but you're eating carbohydrates. That's not true. You dropped sugar, but you're eating fruits and honey. We cannot, we cannot go that route. Halima Hussein, tell us what your mother is eating and we'll address it, okay? Ginger, okay, medicine for osteoarthritis. Paracetamol is the standard for osteoarthritis, but you cannot use paracetamol when you've not fixed the problems. So you fix the cause, which is basically diet. And once you fix the diet, you can use paracetamol temporarily as you fix the diet. Because there's no medicine for arthritis. You, there's medicine for symptoms of arthritis, which is pain. Medicine for arthritis is diets. Faria, please, how about sheep oil to replace seed oils? Yes, every animal fat, use it. Use sheep fat, use uh, the camel hump fat, use chicken fat, use uh, milk fat, use butter, use uh, what else? Any animal fat can be used. It's healthy for you. Join fix and clindamycin. That's a very common combination. They use that. <laughs> clindamycin is a very good antibiotic for actually bone infection because it penetrates the bones, okay? But it is temporary because what is causing the infection is low immunity. So how do you fix the low immunity? Fasting, eating healthy. You will not need an antibiotic. But once you use clindamycin, make sure you use... Uh, uh, the fermented cabbage or the kefir to just replenish the gut microorganisms. Yes, she. Hi. Hi, how are you? I'm good, how are you? I'm very fine. Uh, I have a question. Does it concern arthritis or gout? Uh, gout. After healing gout, mm. is it uh, which is the best medicine for heartburn? Why do you need a medicine for heartburn? She she was a she, she has a, she has done operation and gotten out. Of what would I say? She is a former victim of gout hmm. and healed. Now what she complains about? Mm -hmm. Me heartburn most of the time. Is she on any medication? I'm not sure. Oh, so you don't have history and you want us to address. There is no medication for heartburns. Heartburn is what you call the GAD, gastroesophageal reflux disease. It is not a heart burning. It is just stomach content coming back to destroy or to hurt your esophagus. Therefore, tell her to fast, to concentrate stomach acid. There will be nothing coming back. Tell her to drop the seed oils. Tell her to drop the wheat products and tell her to drop sugar. Period. Thank you. And you can join my YouTube. There's a video. There, there are several videos about us, uh, ulcers, H. pylori, gas, uh, the gut, and the reflux disease. You can learn a lot from that. Mm -hmm. We were told that cold causes arthritis when growing up. That is a lie. They also told us that cold showers cause pneumonia. Right? <laughs> they don't. Cold does not cause arthritis what cold does is it exposes you it actually opens you up to know that you have a problem in your joints because when those joints shrink the pain so cold does not cause arthritis no it doesn't you have arthritis and then the cold just exposes that okay that for osteoarthritis and gas come on that's a bad question jen this life has it's has talked about what you should drop for you to prevent arthritis so what you what we drop and actually i have a video about diet plants so there's no diet for somebody who has osteoarthritis or diet for somebody who is diabetic or diet for... There's, not, there's no such thing like that. They're just diets. You're either eating healthy or eating unhealthy. So there's no diet for you specifically. Not unless you want a diet plan, which you will pay successfully. <laughs> yeah? You want us to test your DNA and then write a diet plan for you? It's expensive. Now, the reality is there's no diet for somebody who is hypertensive, somebody who is diabetic, somebody... Unless you have maybe kidney failure... Stage 4, stage 5 of kidney failure, that's when you can be written a diet plan for you. But all other people, they require diets that are healthy. So eating healthy does not consider that you are mimic arthritis, so I need a specific diet for arthritis. No. Who is this? This is... Uh, is it Luombia? Luombia. Luombia. Yeah. Oh, what a name. How so are you? I have a question. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, it's about steroids. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, Triamcinolone, Triamdeng? Yes. Steroids for scars. Mm -hmm. I actually have a friend that recently passed after using those steroids. Yes. So, how safe and unsafe are they? Thank you for that question. Do you know why I'm saying thank you? It's because steroid injections are also used in management of arthritis and gouty arthritis. So the rheumatoid and gouty arthritis, they inject it in the knee uh, or in the joint to just help you relieve pain. So yes, steroids are potent painkillers. They kill the pain. But you see, they're not treating arthritis. They're just masking the symptoms. But side effects of steroids are worse than the effects. They're, they're actually more than the benefits. Because one, they cause something that is called lipodystrophy. So you, you, you deposit lipids or fats in places in the body that you're not supposed to, like on the hump here. So you come back with a buffalo hump. You look like a buffalo. That is one. Number two, they give you water accumulation around the face. So you have this round face, the moon face. And this is what women follow to think that they have a round face because they use steroids to just make sure they have a round face. That is criminal because that is water accumulating around your face and under the skin, and that's problems. They also give you uh, very weak bones. Because osteoarthritis, not osteoarthritis, osteomalacia, they actually cause you uh, osteomalacia. And above all, steroids tell the liver to produce sugar. So steroids cause you diabetes. Steroids are known to cause you diabetes. So you can imagine if you're using a steroid and you are pre-diabetic or diabetic. Pop, pop, pop. That is one. You can imagine if you are somebody who has had a silent stroke. Do you know silent strokes? Silent strokes is when somebody experiences a stroke, but it disappears so fast to an extent that they did not even know it was a stroke. It's like just, they just get a blackout and then it's their back. So when they go and do a scan, the doctor tells them, by the way, did you suffer a stroke before? They tell the doctor, no, I've never suffered a stroke. That is what you call a silent stroke. So yes, uh, the MRI or the CT scan shows you suffered a stroke before, but you didn't even realize it because it was a silent stroke. That is a problem. So imagine if you had that and then you're taking a steroid. And you get your blood vessels clogging. Pop. Pop. <laughs> okay, so yes, chances are he suffered the, uh, the consequences of the steroid injection, but we cannot just put that on the steroid alone. There must be something else uh, that played a role uh, in conjunction with the steroid. But yes, steroids are very dangerous. So they're not supposed to be used for long term. So this is for the people who use uh, steroids for asthma, the inhalers. People who use steroids uh, for arthritis. And chronic conditions like the autoimmune conditions be very careful for a month itraconazole which is an antifungal and daflazacot uh, huh huh daflazacot a steroid tablets uh all-purpose moisture and cream miconazole cream betamethasone how will these skin prescriptions expose me to arthritis or stroke kidney problems now listen the, the, the weird part about medication is, you see when you take paracetamol, it goes to the stomach, but it's intended to heal the head. So don't think that when you're applying a skin product on your skin, it will not mess your kidneys. Do you think that is just locally, it's going to work locally? Unless, steroids will still get into your system because the skin is an absorbing surface. It's actually a highly absorbing surface because it has blood vessels and then it has fat. So anything that you apply on the skin is absorbed into the skin and goes into the system directly. It only avoids the liver. So actually it gets into the system. And that's how it gets to mess up your system entirely. Because what we want is we want the drug into the system. And you see, traconazole is actually a systemic antifungal. So it has to go into the system for it to work. Things like clotrimazole, you can apply them and they work locally. But steroids go into the system. When they go into the system, they mess up your, your system entirely. Yeah. <laughs>